Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Health Tech Beat podcast. The mission of our podcast is to show the real life challenges of implementing uh, technology in healthcare. The podcast is sponsored by Demigos, a company that develops IT solutions for healthcare startups and companies. And for more information, you can check on demigos.com. My name is Ivan Dunsky, your today's host as always, and I'm joined by a very special guest, uh, Marco Mayer, the head of ecosystems at 5HT. Marco helps chemical and health corporates to work with innovative startups and uh, helps startups to approach the chemical and health industry. After studying in Munich, Singapore, and Beijing, he's currently in his doctoral studies in London, focusing on startup corporate collaboration. Marco, thank you for, for joining. How are you today? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, pleasure to be here, Ivan. Looking very much forward to yeah, have a fruitful discussion. And I'm safe and sound and healthy, which is probably the most important uh, thing today. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, could you please give a brief introduction of who you are beyond that I already mentioned and what you do at 5HT? Yeah, sure. Pleasure. So I'm heading the ecosystems team at 5HT. 5HT is Germany's digital hub for chemistry and health. So we deal along the whole value chain from chemistry to pharma, pharmaceutical uh, and towards health and health companies. And we are a team of 15 people at the moment, and we do support both sides. So we all often speak about startup corporate collaboration, and often there's a lag between both startups and corporates, uh, which might uh, lead to uh, a loss of innovation potential when these two players cannot really work together. And this is what we often see. And therefore, we support both sides. Uh, we help corporates, first of all, setting up processes to identify startups, processes to leverage external innovation, such as startup solutions. And on the other hand, we help startups in, for example, drafting their pitch deck, better defining their value proposition towards a health care company, towards a pharmaceutical company. And so our mission is to increase the possibility of a match. And because mm -hmm. in the end of the day, we try to help both parties to find to each other and then work on uh, common projects. And here we also see ourselves more as a preparation, as a matchmaking and platform, and also as a guide to help both parties fruitfully and successfully work together. Yeah, I think that's very important task and that you connect these two worlds because as what we also see that startups may have good ideas, but they not necessarily understand how to implement those ideas in large corporations, where are like there are many layers of management and so on. That's really a hard task for them to understand all the nuances and details of that world. Yeah. Could you please tell us, I'm just curious, how um, is performance of your organization is uh, measured? Yeah, so the uh, actual KPI we follow is the number of matches. So how many mm -hmm. real conversations uh, did we manage to enable and how many, I would say, follow-up activities such as projects uh, are coming out of this. So our mm -hmm. goal, we are more a altruistic uh, hub. So um, mm -hmm. um, as, as I mentioned, we're Germany's digital hub for chemistry and health. Our mandate is by the Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy. So mm -hmm. four years ago, the German government decided, uh, or first of all, they assessed the status quo of uh, the German digital ecosystem. And when they compared Germany four or five years ago um, with other innovation hotspots, and especially when it comes to digital, it was very obvious that Germany is not the most mature country and economy when it comes to digital, to digital services, to digital infrastructure, as an example. And therefore, the German government decided to uh, start another initiative to support both worlds. And uh, we do see Berlin as one of the major startups, uh, startup hubs or mm -hmm. startup cities in, in Europe. 
but as Germany is very decentralized, there are much more cities, um, larger cities like Munich or Hamburg evolved in the past, but also different clusters, regions. So we are based in um, 30, 45 minutes south of Frankfurt International Airport. It's called the Rhein-Neckar region, that both rivers, um, they come together here. Um, Mannheim, Heidelberg and Ludwigshafen are the three major cities of this region. And therefore, the German government decided, okay, ca how can we bring together the old economy, the established corporates, and the new economy, digital startups. And therefore, they started the Digital Hub Initiative, where 12 different digital hubs were initiated. In Frankfurt, there's one hub for fintechs, because Frankfurt is the leading uh, financial center. In Hamburg, there's uh, Germany's largest harbor, so there's a hub for supply chain and logistics. And in our area... There is the health sector, huge, and also, for example, BASF's headquarters, so the largest chemical company, is based out of Ludwigshafen. And yeah, this, this is the story behind. So the government said we need to do something, but we mm -hmm. not only put money into, I don't know, invest as, an, as a typical uh, VC or government VC, mm -hmm. but rather to bring to support the old established corporates and the old economy in setting up these hubs. So this is the story behind it. We work altruistic, so we're not very uh, profit-oriented or profit-driven. Our goal is really um, how can we support both sides? Because if we have a traditional established term corporate and they might lack in uh, new innovation or in uh, new ideas, and we have startups from Germany, but also startups from abroad, and if you bring them together, then they can build up and co-develop a solution which helps both uh, parties and so this is the, the goal of our organization. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm just curious, does government measure the, are there like some measurable KPIs that you report to government that you, I understand that that is like, you're doing that on a more altruistic way, but are there something to measure, like how I operate well or not? Yeah, so we do have some quantitative indicators you can measure mm -hmm. for example the government has a publicly uh, or an open database where you can see different um, startups registered by each hub mm -hmm. as one example you see okay if there are plenty startups registered one specific hub they see oh this hub is actually working quite well because there's so many startups registered for this hub but I would say the real um, indicators we, we see and also the government is interested in is, uh, is more qualitative wise. Obviously, you can track things like what is the, the total funding, the total amount of funding, the startups in mm -hmm. this ecosystem. But as we don't invest in startups, we have a huge ecosystem of, of startups and other hubs, they operate differently. So therefore, it's sometimes hard to compare uh, the mm -hmm. different hubs because the value proposition and the setup differs from hub to hub. But then I would say the government is looking for qualitative um, reviews. Um, are there real projects, not only some nice slides, but is there startup A working together with corporate B and they did positive impact for the city of XYZ? So this is, these are the stories, I would say. Um, the initiative is driven by success stories. And this is what the, uh, what the government uh, sees. And uh, over the past three years, um, all different hubs are growing. It took some time to really say what is our added value um, to, to the startup ecosystem, to the established corporates. And therefore, I would describe it as qualitative success stories. This is the, these are the real KPIs the government is looking for. Yeah, that's really cool that government supports uh, startups and corporates from other side to like digitalize and be in trends of uh, yeah. the innovation. Maybe I, I quickly add, so it's initiative by the government but each hub works separately so therefore each hub is also kind of self-responsible for their own development mm -hmm. so it's not that the government t um, puts all the money on the table and then we can work and they do co-fund some activities in our particular case it's the German government but it's also two federal states but in Wittmann and Rhine and Palatinate but we do have corporate membership fees and uh, if we are very interested or interesting mm -hmm. for corporates, they can join us. And therefore, it's it's not only the government will like kind of place money and put money mm -hmm. on the table, but we are in a kind of own responsibility to develop ourselves and to grow. And this is very important that we're not fully 
public, but kind of see ourselves as a private public organization, not profit oriented. But if we onboard, for example, more corporate members, we can do more. We can hire more people. We can enable much more startup corporate collaboration. And this is a story. It's not fully government mm -hmm. initiative, but strong interactions and, and strong relations to the industry. And this is very important. Yeah, it adds you uh, flexibility and independence in some way and like adds skin in the game too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Cool. And and you mentioned that you focus more on quality and qualitative measures of your work. Could you please yeah. tell a few or maybe one example of some case study how you helped companies and startups? Yeah, very likely to do so. So with one pharmaceutical corporate so mm -hmm. pharma player international globally operating and they came to us and they said so we're a pharma company so i can't cannot share the name but pharma company yeah. and they said okay we have a medication for a very specific i would say patient market or very specific market and then they said okay look we do see more and more competitors coming into this market and for us it's very important to yeah, build up a strong relation to our patients, to the users of this medication. Mm -hmm. And they said, besides the physical drug or the, the physical medication, we want to bond our, in this particular case, customers um, and to better interact with them. So therefore they said, 5HT, could you help us in identifying and then co-develop a digital add-on? for our specific medication. So what we did then is, first of all, we talked to them to better understand what do you really want. Then we screened the global startup market to identify different types of digital add-ons. So ranging from, I would say, a chatbot where you can have a, like a diary function to say, okay, this morning I wake up, I feel good. At uh, noon, I'm quite of, um, tired. Maybe now it, it could be time for the medication. So, so mm -hmm. chatbot function, diary function, it could be also some meditation app uh, to do some exercise, not only writing down how, how you can health status, but also some increase your physical uh, ability. It could be AR, VR, XR tools mm -hmm. so you take your medication and then as an add-on, you have some physical games. So there were different things we could share with them as a potential add-on. Then we assessed those um, different solutions always by different startup use cases to say, okay, this is startup A, they offer this, mm -hmm. startup B, they offer this. And based on a very broad range of different digital health solutions by startups, we then created a short list and said, okay, based on the long list we assessed, we have a short list mm -hmm. and then we will invite these startups for um, bilateral get to know calls. Then our job mm -hmm. was, instead of just saying, okay, we arranged a meeting, and then you both talk and we lean back. Our, our mission was to prepare the startup to say, okay, you will meet this company. This is their current challenge. And this is the goal, the, the objective they mm -hmm. follow. So this gives us the opportunity to kind of prepare the startup for the specific meeting. We scanned their pitch deck and we held them in their value proposition. We did some, I would say, knowledge sharing. We helped them in their ideation process because it's not possible to find a startup and you buy the solution off the shelf. So um, there's more than just, I don't know, change the colors uh, of the startup solution. They needed to modify their startup To adjust it. Mm -hmm. To adjust it. To adjust it um, to the demands. And therefore, we helped them in the preparation. Then we had uh, meetings with seven, eight, uh, eight startups. Then there were presentations. Then you also understand that the team behind it, you better understand the solution. And we acted for the startup as a colleague, as a supporter, but also for the corporate. So we tell them, okay, and these are the startups. And after each startup, we had a feedback loop where we said, okay, based on our experience, we can also recommend to further dig into or dive into a specific area the startup was offering here or mm -hmm. on the other startup, it might be helpful to have another feedback loop. So for both parties, we act as a supporter, open supporter, and then uh, the corporate in the end, we had from the shortlist a short, short list. And then um, we defined a funnel where we set up a workshop between both parties and really aligned on how a potential solution could look like. And now in the end, uh, it's, uh, it's currently in the development phase where the pharma player works with 
the digital health startup and co-developing the solution and really modifying to the needs of the corporate. Mm -hmm. And um, I assume they, they will launch. So we expect the launch of the of the product in 2022, probably in Q2, Q3. And uh, so this is really from the beginning where a corporate came to us and said, we have the problem, we have the challenge, 5G, could you help us? And from, first of all, helping them in what's in the market, what's possible, and then break it down to really match the demands of the corporate. And now um, they're happy, the startup is happy. Also the other startups, they at least learn something. The end, what market um, needs. They exactly. see what solutions and, are desired. Yeah. And the, and the very positive thing was, although in the end, pharma corporate needed to tell some of the startups, okay, sorry, here we don't have a match because mm -hmm. ABC. But this uh, feedback helps the startup, help the startups better understand the market. Plus, we had a case because the pharma player doesn't only produce this specific medication, they have more medication or more um, business areas. So therefore, we saw the very interesting fact because the pharma corporate was so, I wouldn't say in love with the startup, but they were very happy with meeting so many different startups. And therefore they said, hey, this startup doesn't fit to the current case, but I have some colleagues in another department. It might be helpful for them. So therefore, all of the startups who received a kind of, who were not accepted, they might receive more and more opportunities in different business units. And therefore, in the end, this was a very positive outcome because we saw helping the, the corporate to break it down, what they need was very helpful and bringing them in contact um, with the startups. So this was our qualitative yeah. Um, yeah, and, outcome. Uh, you know what? I think that's very uh, big help to startups because startups may not have such big sales resources and money on marketing to see all these opportunities that are on the market. And that's not easy to find like what company, what needs has and like who to approach and so on. So with that, you give that like laser focus for corporates and for startups that like both interests are met. So yeah, that's, yeah. I think for startups, that's very huge help to and, get and first another, traction. Yeah. yeah and, and another example, how to get traction, because this is when we always assess the needs of the corporate side, and then we go into the startup ecosystem. Sometimes mm -hmm. um, on events or now more and more startups, they see 5HT as a kind of entry gate into the German chemical, pharma and healthcare market. They approach us actively. And sometimes, to be honest, we can give them some feedback where we don't see potential matches with, with our network. But then we had one success story was just simply so we help startups also in, in getting visibility and we conduct interviews with most of the startups we onboard our ecosystem and just um, recently we had a startup story we shared a startup story on our uh, linkedin channel and because i didn't really have someone in my network where i can say okay i bring this startup together with corporate a b or c but then a corporate approach us and said hey i've read the startup story and it, it was super, super interesting. Can you make a connection? And this is what we see, what we try to help. If we have very specific demands, we want to help. If we don't have very specific demands, we try to help with visibility, with some coaching, with feedback for startups. And our mission is, this is a very altruistic mission, is to help every startup at least once. And for most of the startup, we can help more than once. But this is always our, our goal, that, that, that people can say, okay, I didn't receive a investment by 5HT, but I received a good contact. I mm -hmm. didn't receive a contact, but um, they helped me to bring me to a specific event where I met plenty of people. Um, they didn't help me with a corporate contact, but they made help me getting an investor's contact. This At is, least this something to move forward to, to, exactly. to proceed. Yeah. And do you work only with uh, German startups? No. So this is very important. We obviously have plenty of German startups in our ecosystem, but mm -hmm. it's also for us important um, to help and onboard startups from abroad. And uh, there mm -hmm. are several reasons for it. Um, first of all, if you have very specific demands, and um, there might not be a startup in Germany, but maybe in our neighboring countries. And also, as Germany is a large market, and especially healthcare markets, they differ from each other. So when a startup, for example, a French a uh, digital health startup would like to go to Germany. They can do typical sales in approaching customers uh, directly. 
B2C and B2B, the different differ obviously, but they can also use organizations like us um, to say, okay, these are not a consulting company, they don't charge me money, so all our services are free of charge for startups, but uh, maybe they can help me with some visibility, with some insights on the mm -hmm. market, with some first contacts. We're not a sales platform, so if a startup expects us to um, um, uh, yeah, manage to, to bring them 25 uh, meetings with potential customers, this mm -hmm. is not the case. If we see the possibility of match, we will match, but there's no guarantee, obviously. And But this is what we see to also help foreign startups because we see in the healthcare market with COVID, it's not it's not a border where we say, okay, only COVID will mm -hmm. happen in, in Germany and then there's a border to, mm -hmm. Fra uh, to France, there's no COVID, no. And therefore, I think uh, global collaboration on uh, topics like digital health, we have similarities in our chemical vertical where we see sustainability. It's not a, a German-only topic where we would like to uh, yeah, encourage cross-country collaboration and therefore we're very open to startups and they can move um, to to Germany, for example, to open a subsidiary, that's not a must, especially COVID uh, taught us to have first meetings, first engagements virtually. And uh, yeah, this is that therefore we are very international. We have roughly 300 startups in our ecosystem, 150 from Germany and 150 from outside of Germany, so startups from abroad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And you already mentioned that there are some specifics of entering the German market. Could you please elaborate more like, and talk about these specifics of the yeah. German market? I think what is very important is our health insurance market. So in Germany, we have mm -hmm. a statutory uh, health insurance, we have private health insurance uh, companies. And first of all, to see, okay, there are health insurance. There is a statutory health insurance by the government implemented and every German has a health insurance. This is very important because this might differ, for example, from the US market, mm -hmm. where we see more and more startups are going towards a more lifestyle or well-being direction. This is normally not the case in Germany. Lifestyle, well-being, normally you focus on approaching the health insurance company. In Germany, we have the digital health application. There's a fast track and can easily say, okay, a, a e-recipe, so a digital health solution. So you can go to the doctor and then they can say, okay, instead of going to a physical doctor and do some mental health coachings, you can do it online because mm -hmm. um, there are some startups. In this case, uh, the startup self appear offers online coaching sessions for, for mental health and for the diseases. So, so this is a possibility in Germany. And you, you need to know it. Um, otherwise, when you, for example, approach the health insurance company and you don't know there's this DIGA, this digital health applications, then you're not prepared. So preparing is no matter in what market you enter, preparation is key. And therefore, you need to first of all see, okay, who are the health players in Germany or the related players? You have obviously the patient itself, but in the not many cases, the patient itself is the payer for it. It could be that he or she are the user of the solution, but it could be that the health insurance companies are paying for it and is conducting the reimbursement. So this is very important. And as a startup, you then need to differentiate who is using my solution, who is paying for the solution. It could be also that the solution itself is reimbursed by the health insurance company, but the data I generate might be important for pharma companies. So therefore, mm -hmm. this is my general advice. Try to speak with so many people as possible before entering the, the, the market in Germany because I might have different perspective and uh, angle when it comes to the healthcare market. Other pharma companies see my different, health insurance companies see a bit different. And therefore, this is very important. First of all, who is active in Germany? Who is important? It's not a lifestyle market, it's not a well being market. You have health insurance companies, and there's probably the most critical parties to address. You have the pharma players. You have patients, you have doctors, you have hospitals, and this is very important to first of all understand something like this. And we see more and more of these initiatives are also expanded outside of Germany, like these digital health applications. Now, there are some talks that if we might can um, have a more European-wide initiative like this. Yeah, and I think that the structure of the market may differ from other countries, but also there are some technical things that startup needs to consider. For example, language 
yep. to add if they have English only, they need to add German as well as they need if they are HIPAA compliant. Now they need to be GDPR compliant entering the market. So there are some um, things uh, that I needed to change as well in this perspective. Yep. And working with corporates, you obviously understand what each category of healthcare organization needs. Could you please tell more like what startups need to keep in mind when they target different uh, types or categories of healthcare organizations? Yeah. So first of all, it's important to directly share the expectation um, of a startup because we say, Direct customer feedback is super valuable, but don't burn yourself. Don't oversell um, yourself. And uh, typically you can approach pharma companies a bit more earlier. So I just had a conversation with a pharma uh, corporate this morning and they say we're very much into a very early stage of a startup because then we mm -hmm. can focus more on co-development. Then we kind of guide mm -hmm. the startup and here modify the solution. Similar to the use case I mentioned it was a different mm -hmm. uh, pharma company I talked to this morning but in pharma we see and um, they are more open to also work with startups in a more early phase this mm -hmm. also could different uh, that one corporate one pharma corporate say in this unit we work with more mature in this department we work with more early stage startups this of is course. this is very important health insurance companies are more willing to really see that they don't have the time don't have the money to co-develop a solution with a startup it could be that they modify it but just a bit so if you target mm -hmm. a health insurance company, it should be very clear. Also, the value proposition should be very clear. What you can do is, okay, we offer this. We offer a digital therapeutic platform for specific for mental health. And you can't use the same pitch deck approaching pharma and using the same pitch deck approaching health insurance company. This is, yeah. this is barely possible. And this is important to keep in mind. What's the maturity of your solution? And uh, therefore, my advice is to talk to some of those players, but tell them, okay, we're currently in a kind of customer feedback evaluation stage. So I don't want to sell my solution directly to you. If you want to buy it afterwards, sure, you can. But for me, it's important to understand your needs. Are the data important for you? What can you do with the data I, I will generate? Mm -hmm. And ask them a bit. And then before kind of approaching them, selling them, the worst case, this is what we experienced uh, uh, already, is that you then... The pharma corporate is not happy with you. They have an internal startup database. They say not ready or the team is not very, they don't understand what we actually do in pharma. And then you burn. If you then approach another um, department of the same corporate and they quickly kind of internally check your startup and they say, oh, not ready. Okay, before we burn mm -hmm. our fingers again. So this is very important. If you approach health player in Germany, make sure what do you want to get out of, of the, out of the meeting? And you mentioned it, uh, Iron, very important language. Um, although in Germany, I would say there's a high standard of, of English speaking people, but still um, it's very important that at least you have someone in your team um, who can speak German. This is also what we see that uh, start from abroad, they hire um, German native speakers to approach uh, because this is very important. It's a soft factor. But I would say don't underestimate it as uh, if you include the German-speaking part of Switzerland and Austria, it's almost a hundred million um, people market and therefore yeah. language is very critical. Yeah, of course. And what about uh, healthcare providers? What yeah, specifics so, they have? So, I so mean, what, what, hospitals, clinics. Yeah. So for hospitals, for example, what we see that university hospitals, if they focus on research as well, so with one use case, one example here in, in Mannheim, we have the University Hospital Mannheim Heidelberg. It's under the umbrella of the University Hospital of Heidelberg. And they just recently opened their second startup campus for medtech startups. So they want to really um, build a strong relation between startup entrepreneurs in the medtech space and the university hospital and research. So this is very closely linked. Um, if there's a, I would say, a traditional hospital, not a university hospital, not yeah. focusing on research as well, and they often don't have time and the infrastructure for you. So if you want to address hospitals, make sure if it's a hospital which already installed some processes to work with startups, maybe they have a campus, a startup campus, maybe they have a kind of um, spin-off program or research program for, for startups, 
and, and other hospitals, if they don't have it, it, it's super tricky because it could be they only have a person who is responsible for IT, but they never talked to a startup before. So therefore, it's hard to approach them. Um, mm -hmm. Then if you go to dentists, for example, in, in Germany, you have not big clinics with hospitals, but you have, for, for example, dentists, also very different to, to approach them. And therefore, you need to make sure, okay, are there any organization, type of organization, and do they have any processes already installed? And this is super helpful, having support organizations like the one in Mannheim, it's called UPEX 41, very close distance to, to the university hospital. These are the ones, and um, if they are, for example, a startup pitch night, then leading doctors will listen to the pitches and they say afterwards, hey, you startup founders, interesting solution, can we have a coffee tomorrow? And this is very important, especially when it comes to networking and hospitals is tricky because especially now in COVID, we normally don't have time. Funding is often important for pharma. If pharma corporates like your solution, funding shouldn't be a big problem. For mm -hmm. hospitals, it's more a problem. So therefore, these research-related startup campuses they are important. Mm -hmm. So this university hospitals, they can serve as entry point for startups yes. to this provider's world. Mm -hmm. Yes. Got and it. because if you approach the a leading doctor in a specific department, it's a yes, cool solution. Let's have a coffee tomorrow. He's obviously well connected to other hospitals mm -hmm. um, without having such uh, processes. And therefore, this is very important. In the end, it's people's business. Um, startup innovation, it's people's business. If you identify... Um, promoters, if you find um, people who really support your solution, this is very important. And I'm also curious, you mentioned that these pharma companies can co-develop the solution with the startups. Couldn't that be a, an obstacle for startups that they like tie that solution to the needs of this specific company and uh, then this specific company can influence the further development and further growth of that startup? Like, could you please elaborate more on how that could be done efficiently or maybe that is not the case? Yeah, it, it could be the case. So very, very good question. And I would say it's an unsolved uh, issue. So obviously, if you're targeting a big pharma and big pharma is saying, I like your solution, but we need to modify it to really adjust it to our demands, to our needs. And it's good for startup because you have a good pipeline. It might be that mm -hmm. um, the big corporate really will pay um, for your solution. It could be in the end maybe an exit uh, opportunity for you. On the other hand, it might limit yourself because if you yeah. go to another big pharma and then they say, oh, no, you need to re-modify your solution again. So this is really, in the end, what's your approach? Maybe if you as a startup are super attractive to 10 pharmaceutical corporates, mm -hmm. You don't have to modify and adjust your solution mm -hmm. too much. Um, it could help. It could bring uh, revenue. It could be a possible uh, exit opportunity. But there's no recipe. And you say, okay, this is how you should you should act. I would say it's an insufficient answer. It depends on the case. It depends on the case. Yeah. Uh, what, what we see in the biotech space, they are typical exit opportunities. In the digital health space, it really depends. It could be also that um, if you have um, your infrastructure and then for one disease, you partner with Big Pharma 1. For the other use case, you, you partner with Big Pharma um, B. And then it's use case dependent. But in the end, as a startup, it's important. In the end, you need to make money. You need to make money and you need to increase your runway. And as much more money you can make, as long as your runway is. And this should be your goal. Don't um, undersell yourself. Be self-confident. And also test it out, test your borders when you speak. Do not only uh, accept the first offer you receive from Big Pharma, uh, mm -hmm. talk to two, three to also um, differentiate and compare them. But in the end, this is really, sometimes it's gut feeling um, by the founders. There's no magic recipe to solve yeah. it. Yeah, of course. And now a more like personal question. What are the problems that uh, you are focusing now or what are tasks that like, currently in your primary focus? Yeah, so what we see the topic of sustainability mm -hmm. did influence especially chemical corporates, but more and more pharmaceutical corporates. And, mm -hmm. and uh, the topic is in every industry now. And uh, this is something we will, we will further stress and further focus on in, in the future. For example, if you have expired drugs or near to date drugs, which expire soon, 
what, what can you do with them? How can we also use the topic of uh, sustainability and leverage the topic of sustainability in the pharma space? This is mm -hmm. something which is not very much highlighted at the moment. And everything which is going to personalization, if it's personalized uh, therapy, the personalized medicine, those are the things which will uh, increase or will receive increased attention in the future. And this is also what we see when we talk to pharma. Individual therapy, individual medicine is one, one important mm -hmm. thing. And the, the second big pillar, sustainability and also in pharma. Yeah, yeah. Could you please share what are current projects that you're working on now? Yeah. So maybe the, the one project to highlight and which we can publicly um, uh -huh. share is our next startup program. It's called the Crosslinker program. These are typically our main events for startups because mm -hmm. it's a one-week bootcamp. On the final day, you will receive contact to various players in our next program. We focus on lab of the future. So um, if you are a startup offering a solution for the lab of the future, it could be lab IT security, autonomous workflows, mm -hmm. uh, lab experimentation. Um, we select 12 um, startups and they have the chance to meet companies like BSF, Bayer, Böhringer, Henkel and, and further corporates. We will invite investors and we prepare them for it. So what we normally do throughout the whole year, we do it just in a one-week bootcamp format mm -hmm. to help startups individually in a better position themselves and then uh, meet innovation teams of these big corporates. So it's typically a very good entry point um, to mm -hmm. enter and first of all do some uh, market surveillance in the German market. This is the next program with big uh, pharma, with big chemical players. Um, which already confirmed the participation. We have already the first application from, from the startup side. And this is really one of our major events. It will take place in February uh, 7 to 11. And uh, yeah, this is the next big thing we are currently working on. And is this an online event? Yes, due to the current uh, situation yeah. of COVID, we decided to have a fully virtual event. Also more helpful for startups. They need to fly in for just a week or a couple of days. Yeah. And it's fully virtual. Yeah, cool. Cool. So we are coming to the end of an interview. What kind of advice can you give to startups who would like to enter the German market and to introduce their solution to corporates? Yeah, first of all, I think it's very, very important to see who are potential supporters in the market. Obviously, 5HG can play a role, but there are much more uh, relevant players um, out there. Um, really be sure what, what is the goal. Um, am I there to just do some sales? Am I in a position to further adjust and co-develop my, my product? So why would you like to expand mm -hmm. to the German market? This is very important. Then reach out to supporters. The German government, uh, GTAI, they have an organization to support startups in helping them. What are regulatory aspects? What are funding opportunities? What are visa opportunities? So there are plenty um, supporters reach out to them first and uh, together with them you can then uh, define your strategy to enter the market and uh, yeah then be curious network it's people business also in germany if you speak the language that's a big plus and you can mm -hmm. also hire people to support your journey and then talk connect meet relevant people and then you need to decide if it's worth to further stress and further um, put uh, resources into the German market. Or maybe after a while, um, you need to pause and focus on a different market. But supporters are, are very much there, especially in digital health. Um, there are plenty of uh, initiatives currently ongoing. And it's one of the biggest topics and hottest topics at the moment. Yeah, I love uh, the advice and like your vision that there is a people business. And to understand what is going on, you need to talk yes. uh, that's very simple but uh, often startups uh, forget to do that they just create products focus on, on their product but sometimes you just need to talk and that's a key uh, to understand what's going on in in reality that's true yeah yeah i appreciate that i think that things that we have covered are very useful especially for startups which want to enter the german market that you shared the di differentiation between different types of providers, like what they need, how better to approach them. So I'd like to end an interview with the exercise called rapid fire round. So I will ask you several questions and you give answers to whatever you want. Okay. Uh, so the first question is, what is your favorite book? 
the fa uh, many favorite books when it comes to digital. I would recommend Amy Webb, The Big Nine. So she focused on the big nine corporates in the US and in China and how they uh -huh. change dramatically society, economy, and even politics. So The Big Nine by Amy Webb. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What is the location that impressed you the most? location impressed me the most so i would go with the grand wall of china so i spent oh. uh, luckily during my master's time in beijing and visited the great wall of china and was super impressive not digital at all fully physically and, uh, was super impressive how man-made or humankind could build up such a long and huge wall it was super super impressive mm -hmm. yeah And what is the uh, one piece of advice that you would give to uh, your 20 years old self? The advice to my 20 years old self? If you wouldn't be that much advice, but similar to the one I mentioned to startups, in the end, um, network is your net worth. So um, <laughs> yeah. maybe grades, grades are important, but um, in the end, you need to know who is active in this area. So network, network, network is the key. And still focus on good grades in school and in university, but network is the most essential part. Yeah, I love the phrase network is your net worth. Yeah, I never have heard it before. <laughs> Thank you, Marco, for your time that you shared so much. Before we finish, what is the best way to get in touch with you if people want to connect? Yeah, actually, it's uh, LinkedIn in, in a digital space. Just uh, connect with me, reach out to me, say, mm -hmm. hey, Marco, I'm currently a startup thinking about entering the German market. Could you help me? And uh, then I reply. You can also visit our 5-ht.com website. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned, I would prefer LinkedIn as, as it's a people's business. Reach out to me and me and my team will help you. Um, at least and find a partner giving you some advice, giving feedback. And yeah, I would appreciate in uh, coming in contact with uh, some of you guys. Yeah, yeah, of course. We will add all the links in the interview, in the resources section, as well as the link to the bootcamp. Perfect. I think that could be a very exciting entry point for, for startups. Yeah, so thank you, Marco, for your time. And thank you, listeners. We will see you in next episodes. Yeah, thanks, Ivan. It was my pleasure and uh, stay healthy. See you around. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.